Hello everyone, welcome to The Domovoi. This is a game where you play as someone speaking with a storyteller, who is telling you a tale about a Domovoi, which is a house spirit in Slavic folklore. This game is totally free, I'll have a link in the description to where you can check it out for yourself. This game is made in Twine, and like all of the games that I've played previously made in Twine, it doesn't have any sound. Now normally what I do is I just add in some background music to fit the mood of of the story that's being told. But in this case, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to do something more. So I'm going to do more of a complete pass on the sounds for this, instead of just adding music. And hopefully it turns out well. So, without further ado, let the tale begin. I have a tale for you, friend. Ah, not one of those old superstitions. Forget all you know about such stories. This is a new tale, with real heroes. First performance. Help me work it out, will you? Pass the time. Thank you, friend. In an old, simple place, far from a good railroad, where the soil was too poor for the tractor's plow, the month of March encased a hut with thick ice fences. The weather had sealed the wooden shutters on the windows, all except one where an unskilled cut had left a three-inch breach that exposed the glass panes underneath. It had been these three inches the spider used to enter the hut. And so, inside this old, simple place, the Domovoi negotiated with the spider. The Domovoi moved one step back to see the spider's entire web. Each line of silk connected into a mesh that stretched from a window frame to the center beam. The spider had fortified this position, the Domovoi believed, as the beginning of a campaign to advance on the red corner, where the Virgin Mary's paper portrait decayed in the progress of time. You are in the home of the absent master, Nikolai Pavlovich Gospodarev, the brave man who now battles. I have 300 children, master, the spider interrupted. The devils that raid our villages. He is the first son of the Patriarch, and I am charged to keep and defend this home. It is winter, Master. You are covered with hair, while my children are soft, the spider continued. The Domovoi paused. The spider had now encased a wooden chair in her silk. The Domovoi moved two steps back to see the spider's entire web. Friend, here I'm uncertain. Share your mind. How should the Domovoi advance his argument? He could invoke tradition, uh, perhaps religion. Let's go with tradition. Thank you, friend. Until the master has returned to maintain the familial land, which the mirror distributed to his grandfather in decades past, I cannot permit the presence of unwelcome... Such talk of homes, master... I've carried my children across field and forest. They've never known the comfort of familiar space. Old benches, ovens, beds, those are your luxuries. Would you throw my children and I into the storm? Would you deny us that connection? The Domovoi paused. The spider had now encased a wicker broom in her silk. The Domovoi moved three steps back to see the spider's entire web. Friend. Share your mind. Would it be compelling if the Domovoi were persuaded to listen? Why, yes. I think it would. Thank you, friend. In that moment of weakness, a wave of black dots rolled off the spider's back and onto the web. The children huddled into packs, where they shivered like atoms. After this performance, the winter winds, previously familiar to the Domovoi, now seemed to besiege the hut. The Domovoi turned from the spider and her brood, limped to the bench crafted by his master some time ago, and fell onto it. He rested a hand on a knee. The other pulled at his beard. His simple mind produced no valuable thoughts. Will you light the oven for us, master? It is cold. Great work, friend. I agree the Domovoi would be a creature who does not think past tradition. Friend, I feel your unease. 
you shouldn't dwell on what could have been, because there aren't tales we performed the same twice. We're building new worlds. Even this performance will change. Characters and events will be different in your memories than when you first heard them. Doesn't that comfort you? Ah, forgive me. I was carried off. I'll continue. Near that old, simple place where the Domovoy and the spider had negotiated, the soldier took a hammer from his sack. It felt comfortable in his hand. He had swum the deep lakes, crossed the dark swamps, rested in the peaceful backwaters, and survived the primeval forests. Now, in his old, simple place, he would settle and build the new world. The soldier tore open the wooden shutters with the three-inch breech and exposed the glass panes underneath. He raised his hammer. Inside the hut, the burning oven blackened the walls and furniture with strata of soot. The Domovoy resented each particle. Despite routine attempts to clean, he could not combat the powerful furnace. He had been sitting on his master's bench, trying to think of anything other than soot when the soldier's hammer shattered the window. In the next moment, the Domovoy felt his skin melt, his muscles shred, his bones shatter, all at once. His consciousness stretched to take on the room's full dimensions. The oven warmed his newly wooden interior. Winter froze his exterior. Just as the threatened tortoise retreats into its shell, the Domovoy had become the hut. When the soldier climbed through the broken window, the Domovoy felt as if he had swallowed a bowl of thick she. He didn't feel unsafe. His physical form had merged into the walls, the furniture, the sheepskin beds. But it was too late to douse the active oven that revealed the presence of life. The Domovoy watched the perceptive soldier unbutton his holster and take out a revolver. Simple creatures have simple thoughts. The soldier was the soaring eagle, the hero of the land, but the Domovoy saw a thievish fox. He worried for the silver samovar, still full with tea. He worried for the iconic towel, embroidered with his master's portrait. He knew he could not defend both at once. Tell me, friend, what is dear to this Domovoy? Does he protect the samovar? Or the towel? I say... the towel. Good idea, friend. The Domovoy concentrated on the features of the iconic towel. Folded over a wooden bar, its embroidered front depicted his master, Nikolai. For some time now, the Domovoy had spoken to this towel. At first to inform it of the usual routines and chores done to upkeep the hut. But more recently, to share his fears and anxieties. He stored these intimate moments in his memories as he moved the individual threads and began to re-knit the portrait. When the soldier inspected the iconic towel, the thread cascaded. Nikolai's face crawled down the wool canvas. His mouth rose like a zit, then settled somewhere. The knitted lips trembled but produced no sound. The soldier, undisturbed, pulled the towel from its bar and stopped the performance. He knew only one creature had such dominion over the household. I'm not scared, Domovoy. Come out. Let's discuss this problem of ours. Great work, friend. I'm impressed. We showed the Domovoy's reverence of his master, then revealed its uncomfortable connections to backwards religious ideologies. I'll continue. In that old simple place where the month of March rose its furious storms, the soldier turned from the iconic towel and saw the Domovoy, sitting on his master's bench, one hand on a knee. The soldier pulled a chair to the table and considered the creature. Old hair, old bones. Is that what your master looked like, Domovoy? Address him as master, rude intruder, the spider said. 
The mirror distributed this land to him. You must leave, the Domo voice said to the soldier. Am I not a guest? Where's my tea? My bread? You let the spider stay here. Answer me, Domovoy. The Domovoy pulled at his beard. I am charged to defend this hut until the master's return. No one lives here. The village is abandoned. He is lying, master, the spider said. Loose hair collected in the Domovoy's palms. Whom was your master conscripted to fight? He battles the eastern devils as we speak. The soldier paused. He considered the iconic towel. I'm sorry, friend. That war ended 60 years ago. The Doma voice sank. He could not count, but he knew this to be a large number. Your master is dead. The soldier lit a cigarette. As the spirit slouched further into his knees, the soldier's drags became longer, more comfortable. The fires in the oven died. The hut grew cold, as if it had never been warm. The cigarette burned so bright, the Domovoy searched those tiny fires. They were his master's candles, unlit for decades. Would he never return? Find a different hut. The soldier tossed the spent filter. Or find a different path. He put his revolver on the table. The Domovoy felt the furniture around him like phantom limbs. He had seen such a tool before. A musket his master used to kill thievish foxes. Several anxieties clustered in the house spirit's consciousness. The iconic towel pleaded to him. Its existence depended on the Domovoy's survival. They were trophies of a backward civilization, hoarded by a dead man's creature. Old relics, old sins. The soldier waited. Tell me, friend. Does the Domovoy press a revolver to his heart, or put it in his mouth? I'm going to say his heart. The Domovoy pressed a revolver to his heart. His hands started to shake. The silver samovar screamed at him. Yes, friend. Now push that bit of metal in. The Domovoy listened to the instruction, but the tool did not fire. The iconic towel screamed at him. Ah, sorry. Some chambers are emptied. Try again. Once more, the Domovoy listened, but the tool did not fire. The house screamed at him. Here, idiot, I'll show you. The soldier reached over, <coughs> but flinched as a revolver fired. When he looked down, a pile of dead hair littered the floorboards. In that old, simple place where the Domovoy had been overcome, the winter storm calmed. The soldier had swum the deep lakes, crossed the dark swamps, rested in the peaceful backwaters, and survived the primeval forests. Now, in this new promised place, he would settle and build the new world. Oh, master, I apologize for my earlier comments towards you. The Domovoy had me under a wicked spell, the spider said. Do not worry, friend. This is a new land where women can fulfill themselves without negotiating with men. The soldier put the spider and her brood into a comfortable container, where they huddled into packs to produce silk. Ah, tell me, friend. How does the soldier build this new world? Does he cremate the Domovoy? Or replace the iconic towel? I'm going to say he cremates the Domovoy. The soldier placed the Domovoy's remains into the oven. The furnace, ignited with death, transmuted the corpse into a compact mixture of bone and ash. The creature had been overcome. 
No more would he defend such a backward space. It was only the start of the soldier's work, but the household was now on the path to progress. Great work, friend. You've been instrumental in constructing this tale. I am concerned, though. Do you think the peasants will spread this tale as their own creation? Perhaps we should have put in more violence. If the soldier had a shootout with the Domovoy. Ah, I've kept you too long, though. So rude of me. Thank you for listening to my performance. Our performance. Goodbye, friend. And that is the end of the story. So let me give a brief wrap up. I really enjoyed this game. It, now I have to admit, I don't really understand exactly what's happening in the story. Especially the part about the soldier and creating the new world. I'm not really sure what that's referring to. I feel like I'm missing something, which I probably am because I don't know anything about Slavic folklore whatsoever. So I feel like I'm missing something with that. And because I'm missing that, I feel like the ending is a little bit unsatisfying to me. But despite that, I just really enjoyed it more for the overall mood of it. I really like the... Well, I mean, the writing's really good, of course. And the illustrations are exceptional. And really enhance the atmosphere of it, which is really cool. And, yeah, I just like the mood of it. The whole thing. Just the... It feels so strange because it's... You know, I feel like I'm missing something because I don't know anything about Slavic folklore. But at the same time, it also kind of adds something to it because it makes it more strange and unfamiliar. It just feels like I'm peeking into a very dark and strange little universe. And I just think it's really... It's a really sad story. It's really, really sad. The first time I played it, actually... I actually, um, it actually made me cry the first time I played it, which is saying a lot for a game that only lasts, f what, five to ten minutes? It's really short, but it affected me a lot, even though I didn't really understand exactly what was happening or why. I just found it so sad, this idea of this creature that has been maintaining the household for no one for so long. It's just so sad. And then just to be wiped away as a relic of the past. It's really sad. Yeah. But anyway. Oh yeah, I also want to thank one of my viewers, David, for helping with helping me with the pronunciation of some of the words. Hopefully I didn't still mangle them despite that, but uh yeah, he helped me out with some of the words, which is very much appreciated, because pronouncing words is something that I kind of obsess over. So, hopefully I was at least in the ballpark with them, I hope. And hopefully all of the sound work that I did on it, all the sound effects I added, ended up sounding pretty good. It's the first time I've ever done anything like that. Like I said before, normally I just add music to the background. So this is my first time actually doing something like this. Alright, well, I hope you enjoyed joining me on this tale. And once again, this game is completely free. I'll have a link in the description to where you can check it out for yourself. Thank you for watching.